Well, Fags, first of all, Happy New Year. How was the break for you? Uh, it was good. I actually um, got to catch up with family in um, Melbourne and in Hobart, which has uh, been a pretty rare occurrence over the last couple of years. So uh, nice to see my two grandkids and my daughters and their, and their partners and my mum and my own brothers and sisters. So it was uh, quite a unique experience. It's sort of... Um, I think in some ways you block all that out, but when you get to catch up with them again, you sort of realise how much you've sort of missed that opportunity. And so, you know, if that's what it's been like for me, it's obviously been like that for everybody else as well, uh, particularly if you come from interstate. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was a great, great time, pretty quiet time. Didn't go too many places. I was trying to avoid um, catching co the COVID uh, virus, but um, it was just great to spend some quality time with family. Well, on footy, Fags, the squad's come back looking in really great shape. How's the energy been? Uh, the energy's been fantastic. I, th I think uh, training in some ways has been a great distraction from all the other things that are going on in the world at the moment, all the, all the restrictions that we have to live under and all the things we have to think about. So I think the boys actually really enjoy it uh, when they can get together and, and do what they do best and really enjoy each other's company. So, uh, uh, yeah, good vibe in the group. I mean, there was a great vibe before Christmas. They turned up in, in really good shape. Uh, for the start of the pre-season and uh, they've obviously looked after themselves over the Christmas break and uh, we're, we're just as good on return and you know I thought last night's training session in particular was of a probably a higher standard than I would have expected at this time of the year but that just goes to show that the attitude that's there within the group. Well just on that there is plenty of intensity on the track and plenty of young boys cracking in what's impressed you most you know in the new year about that? Yeah, I think it's the, the hunger in the group. I mean, you're, as a coach, you always sort of hope your players turn up in good shape from their break. Um, you know, they have to train themselves during that period of time, but it, there's been a, a great culture develop at our club, uh, particularly in the, the, the time that they have off for holidays, is the guys that are up here tend to train together in groups, so it's nothing to wander up to Cooper Hill and see 20 of them train together on a, early on a, on a Monday morning or a Wednesday morning. So uh, that's been a really... Uh, surprising and pleasing part of our development um, that I, you know, I haven't seen before at other clubs that I've been at so uh, that's what's impressed me most I guess it does it has done every year for the last two or three and then I guess when you've had a few good years you think are they going to keep going uh, with that and they have uh, probably even more so so the group turned up in great shape uh, I think they're very very hungry to to do well, um, you know, we've been able to play finals the last three years and be very competitive in those finals. But from our perspective, we haven't. We feel a little bit dissatisfied with what we've achieved. Uh, we think we could have gone a little bit further, and you know, to do that, we've got to get some growth over the summer and put ourselves back in that same position. Hopefully, to to do better, a little bit better next year. And on that as well, Fags, it's obviously going to be a complicated year this year with different training numbers week on week, but how are you and the team handling that aspect? Yeah, we're just going to take those sorts of things in our stride. Um, you know, the good thing is we haven't got any guys that are un underdone at the moment, so if they have to have a week off because they got COVID, it won't be the end of the world. Um, it, it sort of it, it mucks around a little bit with your training organisation, not necessarily always knowing numbers, but I think we've just taken the view that we'll forge on and we'll adapt as we as we see fit. You know, fortunately, uh, we've we've had pretty good numbers on the track to start. I, I don't know whether that's going to change. This week had chats, particularly among staff, about contingency plans. If they're not available, who'll take over their role if they're not here? And that might, that'll present good opportunities for other people on staff. and. It might even present opportunities for some of our more senior players to get involved in taking training and things like that. So there's always, um, you know, there's downsides to all this in that we can't do things as we normally have done, but there's upsides, you know. Um, you know, as I said to the players the other day, I was driving to training at Yeronga and I missed a turn off the way I usually go and I had to find another way to get there and I actually discovered a better way to get there that was quicker. So sometimes these, these situations um, uh, bring forward better practices. So... Uh, uh, we're embracing it, is the bottom line. You can't really do anything else, you can't fight it. It is what it is. Now, hopefully we're getting, we're getting through it, hopefully getting towards the tail end of it. Hopefully not too many of our players or staff get it, and if they do, I always hope it's the mildest of, of cases. Uh, you don't want people getting sick in your group, so uh, that's where it's at. Just got to enjoy it and, you know, uh, make the most of every day. And Cam Rain is a player on the forefront of many Lions fans' minds. Can we get a bit of an insight into how he's tracking? 
Oh, well, yeah, he's tracking particularly well. I think Cam was trying to convince me that he could play in the finals last year. That was never going to happen, but um, he's joined in training pretty much from the word go. He, he, the only thing we've avoided with him prior to Christmas was contested work. Uh, but now that we're doing, he's back into that now, post-Christmas. So uh, he looks very fit. Uh, he's obviously very enthusiastic. We're looking forward to having the energy that he brings back in the team. Uh, he's such a tough competitor and doesn't take a backward step and uh, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll play a really important role for the team this year and he's on good track. And another guy who's motoring on the track so far is big Oscar McInerney. Can you chat about a, a bit about him and, and potentially his partnership with Darcy Fort? Yeah, it'll be good uh, for Oscar to have an experienced ruckman uh, in the group that can help him out because he did shoulder a heavy load last year and I think da young Darcy is well, he's not that young he's 27 he's been around a bit but he's at a good age I reckon for Ruckman and I think you know he's a, he's a handy forward as well so I think that's going to help us a, a great deal as a team um, Oscar just continues to grow and grow uh, in the way that he goes about preparing himself um, he's only been with us for five years but in that time he's probably you know grown into almost our most professional player his attention to detail on his on his preparation, both in terms of his ruck craft and his physical uh, work in the gym, and with his running, is uh, second to none. Um, you know, you go to we have our our education sessions around game plan and various other things over the pre-season, and you know he's always there with his notebook open, taking copious notes because he just wants to get everything right and do as well as he can for the team. So he's an inspiration to all of us. He, he has pretty much been from the day that he arrived, but. Um, he keeps going next level with his preparation and uh, you know the, the way he's tracking, um, he'll become one of the really good ruckers in the AFL and, and uh, you know we're so pleased that we've got him in our team. And just lastly Chris, a bit of an update on Noah Answorth. Will, we, will Lions fans be able to see him back in 2022? Yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, he's been doing all the training. Um, it was a it wasn't much of a year for him last year. I hardly played at all, and, di and we didn't see him at all in the AFL team after two years where he showed so much promise for us. He's such a competitor. Uh, but right now, he's, he's as fit as I've ever seen him. Uh, our physios and medical people and fitness people have done a, a magnificent job to sort of get his body back into shape. He had some issues with, with hips and groins and lower back that are pretty tricky uh, to sort through. But um, looking at him now, he looks so strong. Uh, physically, uh, particularly through his core, which was a really important part of, of his recuperation. And uh, uh, as I said, he's, he's training pretty much full time with us now. We modify him a little bit in the middle of the week just to, to look after him. But um, we've got no reason to think that with a little bit of luck, he'll, he'll play a full season this year and we'll, we'll get to see a player probably that we've all forgotten a little bit about. But he's a very, very good player and uh, spirit wise, he means a lot to the team. Beauty, thanks, folks. Thanks, guys.